Today I'm going to demonstrate a caudal epidural steroid injection. This is a variation on the technique of a lumbar epidural steroid injection. With the probe in this location, we can see the following anatomic structures, the coccyx, the sacrococcygeal ligament, and the sacral cornu. This indicates the entry at the sacral hiatus. The needle is placed thusly, performing the block. Indications for this procedure include patients with lumbar spinal stenosis, lumbar radiculopathy, and any other cause of radiating low back and leg pain. In this particular case, the caudal epidural steroid approach is utilized to reduce the need for loss of resistance syringes, fluoroscopic radiation exposure to the patient, and removal of the need for ionic contrast. The same benefit can be achieved utilizing ultrasound. In this particular case, I'm going to be using a Sonocyte C60 probe because of its curvilinear shape, which will facilitate viewing of the sacral anatomy. This is key for the demonstration of the relevant anatomy and ultimate placement of the needle for successful completion of the procedure. The settings are set for 5.6 centimeter depth. Obviously, this is patient specific. A larger patient may require a deeper depth. The other setting is the musculoskeletal setting, or the MSK setting. This provides the best bony enhancement, and as we'll see, we'll need to be passing a needle between two bony plates, and this setting facilitates the best view of this. In order to facilitate placement of the patient for the procedure, it is necessary to have the patient in the prone position as seen here. This is a typical position that would normally be used for a lumbar epidural steroid approach. One key difference, however, is the need to move the gluteal folds so that access to the sacral hiatus, which is the key target, is facilitated. In this particular case, you can see that the gluteal folds have been taped down and away in a caudal fashion to the patient. We now have a clean access point within the two gluteal folds. In order to facilitate a proper block, the following equipment is required. A chlorhexidine prep for sterile technique, a local anesthetic syringe with a 27 gauge, one and a half inch needle for local anesthetic placement, preferably 1% bicarbonated lidocaine, buffered lidocaine, a syringe containing the epidural steroid mix, which is composed of 1% 1 cc lidocaine, 6 cc's of bacteriostatic saline, and then 40 to 80 milligrams of triamcinolone kenalog, which is a, a particulate steroid. The needle utilized to enter the space is a three and a half inch spinal needle. For the conclusion of the procedure, it'll be necessary to have sterile 4x4 for cleanup, and then a simple Band-Aid will suffice to cover the entry site. Placement of a copious amount of gel for coupling, aqueous coupling, is important to enhance resolution on the screen. And then contact is made in the midline. Because there is anatomic variation in the midline physiologically, a sagittal view and then gently rocking the probe in the oblique direction can help find the spinous processes of the sacral space. And then the probe is moved caudally and very clearly the sacral hiatus comes into view. There is a superior plate and an inferior plate and in between them is the sacral hiatus. I'll demonstrate where that access point is. The needle is angled thusly. At this point, I would utilize the local anesthetic to perform a local anesthetic track down to this level. Removing that, I would then place the three and a half inch 25 gauge spinal needle along the same anesthetized track. And then once between the two plates, I would attach my local anesthetic and steroids mix. The needle is visible as this view is in the long axis. The sacral plate is clearly visible, diving anterior and cephalad. Once the injectate enters the canal, the color Doppler shows the fluid perturbation confined within the sacral epidural space, indicating a successful injection without need for contrast or x-ray. Once the injectate is done and the image is recorded as necessary for the medical record, the probe is removed, the needles are removed, the area is cleaned, and then place a Band-Aid over the wound.
And thus, this concludes a successfully placed caudal epidural steroid injection.